everyone. Hello, everybody. My name is Helena Real, and I'm a trans writer, editor, translator, and professional game master from Chile. And today I'll present to you the article Last Silmarils or Lost Silmarils Approaches to a New Spanish Translation of the Silmarillion. As usual, after the presentation, there will be some time for questions. The Silmarillion, published in 1977. 1977, is the seminal work by J.R.R. Tolkien when it comes to the other days of Middle-earth. Although it's not without its faults, recognized by its own editor, Christopher Tolkien, in both the introduction to the original text and in, the, in, and in others of his father's postmortem works that he edited, it still remains a fundamental read when introducing new readers to Middle-earth's earliest stories, as well as providing the most complete and coherent version of the main events that occurred during the first three ages of the world, before what was presented in both The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. In Spanish, there is only one translation uh, of such an important text among Tolkien's oeuvre. This translation by Ruben Macera and Luis Domenech from 1984 has never been revised or widely criticized by Spanish-speaking Tolkien scholars, as far as I'm aware. In spite of what it may seem, considering these facts, the truth is that the Spanish text of the Silmarillion is not perfect, but on the contrary, it has a plethora of issues. This article will take a look at some of the most problematic of these issues, explaining why they are problematic, and as well as analyzing potential alternatives on how to solve them. Considering these problems, it is my belief that a new translation of the Silmarillion is not only a worthy endeavor, but something sorely needed in order to present readers with an accurate and faithful version of the work as possible. The problem of gender. The first and perhaps most self-evident of these issues in the Silmarils of Spanish translation is that, that, that of the name of the jewels at the center of the narrative, the Silmarils or Silmariri in Quenya. As you may already know, um, in Spanish, every noun has a gender, either masculine or feminine. Because of that, when translating a phrase such as the Silmarils into Spanish, the translator needs to decide whether to use a masculine or feminine gender. Unsurprisingly, the Spanish translator decided to go for the masculine, rendering the official translation um, of as Los Silmarils. This is most probably the result of the rule that the Real Academia de Lengua Española, or RAE, the Royal Academy of the Spanish Language, has, which says that the masculine gender is the default and or neutral. So in case of doubt about gender, such as when translating a foreign work, the masculine is preferred. Here, allow me a brief digression to explain the situation in more depth. In contrast with other languages, uh, such as English, for example, and as a relic of their colonialist, colonialist past, the Spanish language has an institution that is dedicated to regulating what the Spanish language is supposed to be. Following an outdated prescriptive approach to linguistics, this institution, the RAE, uh, the aforementioned RAE, is still to these days try to dictate what is right and wrong when speaking and writing in Spanish. Needless to say, the RAI has come under a lot of criticism in recent times for their decisions, especially when it comes to denying recognition to the rise of alternatives to represent the true neutral gender in Spanish. But that's another story. Going back to the translation of the Silmarils as Los Silmarils, this decision is at least questionable from the in-fiction perspective. Uh, if you remember, the Silmarils are usually referred by Tolkien as the Great Jewels, which in Spanish would translate as Las Grandes Joyas. Moreover, the whole conflict between the Noldor and Morgoth because of them and the Oath of Fen or the subsequent Doom of Mantos, of course, is later referred to as the War of the Jewels, which in Spanish would be and has been translated as La Guerra de las Joyas. Um, if you know a little bit of Spanish, you probably have already realized that the translation of Jewel is Joya, which is a feminine noun. Considering that, Considering that the rule in Spanish is that both article and noun must have the same number and gender, the correct translation of, Silmar of the Silmarils into Spanish then um, should be Las Silmarils, because Silmaril is here functioning as Joya, a feminine noun. This is an emblematic example of a recurring problem in the 1984 Spanish translation of the Silmarillion. A lack of understanding and of consideration by the translators of Tolkien's work they don't seem to know or care why Tolkien chooses certain words or another ways of expression and what's worse, make no effort to incorporate those choices into their translation. Let's see some further examples. Air is not the same as before. The writing style of a Silmarillion is one of these most distinguishing characteristics. 
It has often been compared to that of King James's version of the Bible because of the use of archaicisms and manners of speech that are not common in modern English. Just as an example, Tolkien uses and abuses the word air in the text, almost never opting for the more common alternative before. This is so obvious and repetitive that it's not something that can be easily be ignored, but something that I can only imagine a translator would have to address as one of his first translation decisions to make. Here's a telling example from the very beginning of Cuenta Silmarillion. It is told among the wise that the first war began before Arda was fully shaped and ere yet there was anything that were, grew or walked upon earth. In the Spanish translation, this reads, se dice entre los sabios que la primera guerra estalló antes de que Arda estuviera del todo acabada y antes de que nada creciera o anduviera sobre la tierra. Regrettably, but not surprisingly at this point, um, the Spanish translation ignores the difficulty and regional stylistic decision and simply translates air as antes, a very common word in Spanish that is most often used to translate before, even in the same sentence in this case. How is it possible that the translators translated two totally different words in English with the same one in Spanish? Now, the Spanish language has plenty of synonyms and even archaisms of its own to translate air as something other than before. So the translator choice here is perplexing to say the least. The only reasons I can think of that would, that would explain or justify such careless work would be that A, the translators don't know and or understand the use of the word air by Tolkien or that they have purposefully, uh, purposefully ignored the, right, the writer's word choice. As you will see later on and with another issue, there's enough textual evidence to believe I think that it is most probably this latter option than the former that explains this unbelievable oversight. Uh, be that as it may, I believe that you will agree with me that in ignoring Tolkien's stylistic word choice, Maceda and Dominic made the, the similar translation into Spanish all the poorer. The loss of formal addressing. Another example of this loss of formal of the loss of writing style occurs in the case of formal addressing of one character to another. This appears often throughout the text uh, that make up the Silmarillion, but it's never clearer than, than on Aunalindale or the music of the Ainur, the book's first section. Aunalindale is a text that, that is reminiscent in style and content to the Bible's Genesis section. Because of that, it should surprise nobody that when Tolkien chooses to have Eru Ilúvatar or God speak with the Ainur or Archangels, he chooses to employ the now archaic early modern English second person singular and pronouns, exemplified by the, thou, and ye, and their corresponding verbal conjugations. Here's an extended example of most of these in use in the Ainur Lindale. Then Iluvatar spoke, and he said, Mighty are the Ainur, and mightiest among them is Melkor. But that he may know, and all the Ainur, that I am Iluvatar, those things that ye have sung. I will show them forth that ye may see what ye have done. And thou, Melkor, shalt see that no theme may be played that hath not its uttermost source in me, nor can any alter the music in my despite. For he that attempteth this shall prove but mine instrument in the devising of things more wonderful, which he himself hath not imagined. In, the case, in this case, the Spanish translation uses the common forms for second person pronouns. So we have. Entonces Ilúvatar habló y dijo, Poderosos son los Ainur, y entre ellos el más poderoso es Melkor. Pero sepan él y todos los Ainur que yo soy Ilúvatar. Os mostraré las cosas que habéis cantado, y así veréis que habéis hecho. Y tú, Melkor, verás que ningún tema puede tocarse que no tenga en mí su fuente más profunda, y que nadie puede alterar la música a mi pesar. Porque aquel que lo intente probará que es solo mi instrumento para la creación de cosas más maravillosas, todavía que él no ha imaginado. In the first three instances, the translators imply the use of the form vos, which is the equivalent of thou, the, and ye in Spanish. The problem here, however, is that these formal forms are now common in Spanish from Spain. So Spanish speaking readers cannot discern a difference between the way Lovater speaks and any other character in the Samarillion. In this case, I consider that a great solution would be to translate all the text in neutral Spanish that is to say, a Spanish that uses tú and ustedes and the right forms for the second person singular and plural, respectively, and save these forms, vos and vosotros, 
which are archaic and in this use in all Spanish in all Spanish speaking countries that are not Spain, which are the immense majority, by the way, for these instances in which Tolkien employs the archaic forms for stylistic reasons. The last archaic form in the paragraph, thou, is grossly mistranslated by Macera and Dominic by using tu, which is the most common form of second person pronoun in Spanish. This totally ruins the style of the paragraph and makes it so Illuvatar speaks formally to all the Ainur, but disrespects Melkor or treats him especially warmly, which is most emphatically not Tolkien's intention in the original. This is probably the best example of how an obvious mistake changes the meaning and, and or tone of the original, which in my opinion is the capital sin one cannot commit as a translator. Of course, this is just an example, but there are more and many more in the text, specifically anytime the thou and ye come into play. Still, there is another much more disturbing tendency in Macer and Dominic's translation of the Silmarillion, that of just plain adding text to the translation that wasn't there in the original. Introducing new text. All of these translation issues discussed before can be explained as either oversight or uh, decisions, which even if I don't agree with, I could understand. But when the translators start adding text to what that wasn't there in the original for no apparent reason, then I cannot help but denounce their work as shoddy, careless, and even unethical. Here's a telling example right at the beginning of the text. This is once again, I know in the left course. There was Eru the one who in Ardas called Ilovatar, and he made first the Ainur, the holy ones that were the offspring of his thought, and they were with him before aught else was made. The translation, on the other hand, reads, En el principio estaba Eru, el único, que Narda llamado Ilovatar, y primero hizo los Ainur, los sagrados, que eran vástagos de su pensamiento, y estuvieron con él antes que se hiciera alguna otra cosa. As you may have already noticed, this beginning of the Spanish translation introduces a phrase that isn't there in the original, en el principio, which means in the beginning in English. There's no explanation or reason why Macera and Dominic stated anywhere that could at least explain, if not excuse the translators introducing material in their translation that was most emphatically not there in the original. The only reason I can think of why they did this is to imitate the Bible's Genesis section, which begins, at least in the Spanish version, with the same words, en el principio. Even if they did so because they were trying to emphasize the connection between Ainulindale and Genesis, nothing justifies this unwarranted intrusion and, dare I say, lack of work ethics. Conclusions. All of the aforementioned issues in the only Spanish translation of the Silmarillion when considered as a whole, create a situation in which I am, longer, I am no longer comfortable recommending it to Spanish-speaking readers. I am now distrustful of the Silmarillion we have as Spanish speakers, and I am wary that someone reading it will get a wrong impression of what Tolkien was actually trying to say, thanks to the faulty work the, translator, the translators did. Because of this, it is my evaluation that this translation, perpetrated by Macera and Dominic in 1984, and that has never been revised or edited, it is a text that must be retired and replaced by a new version as soon as possible. It is my hope that a new translation could not only solve the problems hereby presented, but also improve the general style of the text. Although some could argue that it, if such a translation followed some of my preferences, such as translating English archaicisms for Spanish archaicisms, could create a text that is less accessible, I would argue that doing, doing so would be in the spirit of it remaining faithful to the original. Moreover, I would go as far as to say that it is better to have a more challenging but respectful text than an easier to read one. This is so because in essence, an easier to read text is in reality a simplified version of the original, which loses many, if not all of the intricacies the author intended. <laughs>